Okay, welcome to this video on PowerWash.com's new Illuminator truck skid. I have to say it that way because it's fun to say. Anyway, the Illuminator is our new truck skid that allows those that purchase from us to assemble an aluminum based product that you can mount your equipment, your tanks, your power washer, your soft washer. Um, you could put your surface cleaner on it, all kinds of things. It's just a multitude of things that you can do with this. It's basic and it's really, really easy to assemble. And what I'm gonna share with you as I go through this video is the overview of the Illuminator, how to assemble the ladder rack, how to add the equipment shelf to it, and just kind of share some ideas on how you might structure equipment on the Illuminator as you put it together. Or if you don't wanna do that and you wanna use our expertise on how to build out a system and plumb it all up and make sure everything works great and correctly when it delivers to you and it's turnkey and ready to go, we can do that too. So let's get started. A little housekeeping before we get started. If you like our channel and love the content we're sharing, please hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that bell so you get the notifications when our videos are published. And always give us a like when you like the video with that thumbs up. So let me get started. So first thing I wanna do is go over the parts that or the options that you can do when you buy the Illuminator. The first one is you can buy just the base plate. So, and let me tell you a little bit about the base plate. This particular one, which is our, our first model we've come out with, and th these, these are, we're finding are very popular because it fits in the back of a short bed truck. And that's the most popular truck on the market. So short beds run, around 66 to 68 inches. This base plate is 65 inches, which is five feet, five inches. Now I did do a video earlier in this year and I said six feet, I was completely wrong on that. I was just going six foot, eight foot beds and off the top of my head, that was wrong. They're, they're all five feet, five inches, which is 65 inches long. I'm gonna lift this up so you can see underneath, but this is constructed of some very heavy aluminum. And you can see the channel and stuff that we put in place, how thick this is. This is actually quarter inch aluminum. So it's really thick and heavy. So if for some reason, not on this particular piece, I wouldn't, well, you can. If you wanted to drill holes and mount equipment right directly to it, you can because it's heavy enough. And most base plates that you see in the industry with power washers and soft washing skids, that the thickness of the plate isn't even a quarter, is, isn't a quarter inch. But this, and I built it for a reason like this, I wanted it over engineered so it would last a long time. So you would have a quality product that you wouldn't be concerned with, with bending or cracking or being in the back of a truck with a bunch of heavy weight, water tanks and things like that, and different placements of weight that would sit on it and cause an issue with the equipment or the, the illuminator itself. So with that being said, we have these channels that run through, which are two inch by six inches so that you can put a forklift in, run it into this and lift it up and move it from truck to truck. So it makes it real easy once you get it all constructed and your equipment mounted on there. If you wanna take it out of one truck, go sit it in the back of another truck. It's real easy to do. That's the base plate. From the base plate, you can add the ladder rack. And with the ladder rack, I'm just gonna do this one end, you get the supports that come with the ladder rack. There's four of these. The ladder rack itself goes on top. And as we go into the video, I'll show you how this stuff goes together. And then on each of the, the upright supports, we get the, the braces that hold it to the base plate. From there, if you get the ladder rack, you get um, <clears throat> two side supports, which will run down the length to hold things inside and you can mount stuff to it and hold it in place with, um, for like uh, tanks and stuff that'll go inside. That's why the side supports are there. And then we have the cross members and the cross members will mount right on top of the side supports. 
So they'll come in wherever you want to put it, and you, you could put, for instance, a water tank against the cab, and then put the cross member up against that water tank, mount it down, and it'll hold that water tank in place. Or you can put other small tanks, surfactant tanks, uh, narrow or upright tanks, things like that. Put your cross support in, then put some bracing around it or straps to hold it in place as well. And you get a better idea of this as I put it together. Or look at the pictures we have online. So that's that. And then the next thing I have are the side shelves or the equipment shelves that go on the side. And those will go right to the ladder rack. And let me kind of give you an idea. So this is the bottom of it. And they'll turn up. And they'll mount right on the side like this. So they'll go over the wheel well and over the side of the truck. And we have rubber, rubber footing that goes underneath this to hold it there. Um, so it can actually sit on the side of the truck too for a little extra support. Now one thing I want to point out is the, uh, the illuminator. If you so choose, you could literally drill out the side shelf and mount your power washing equipment right on top of it, with the motor even. Um, but a lot of times you don't do that because you buy your stuff assembled and skid, and so it just goes right on there. But if you want to do that, you can. It, it's actually that strong. And then what you will need, so we'll send you with all the pieces, so varying sizes of bolts, washers, and nuts that'll hold it together. And then these are the rubber feet that will go on the tool shelves. So you can literally set it right down on the side of the bed, bolt these in place. So there's no um, like bouncing or rubbing against the bed to wear it out with metal on metal. You'll have the rubber piece there to protect that. And then the tools, there's not a lot of tool, well, not a lot of tools that are really needed for the assembly of the illuminator. <clears throat> so you'll have, and we're using some um, battery power drills. So we need a half inch and a 916 socket. We're also gonna use open and closed in wrenches. And then two drill bits, a 5 16 and a 3 8 And then because I'm not actually gonna go through the process of drilling this out on this particular one to mount the tool shelf to it because it's, it customizes to the truck, but you would still do this anyway. You would, you would take your uh, two C-clamps, measure it off, mount it or hold it in place and then drill it out and mount it to the, uh, the side support. And I'll, get, I'll, I'll show you how that works real easy. Now you could take it to the next level and use like, or, or put a level on it to make sure it's level, but your truck might be off or whatnot. So I would just go with measurements and get really accurate on my measurements, set everything in place, make sure it's really tight, drill it out and bolt it together. And if you're not comfortable with doing that, remember we can, we can build this for you, have it all ready, just come to our shop, we'll put it right in the back of your truck and uh, customize it, put it all together for you and then, then you can leave with it. So um, that's that. So. Before I go any further, we're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna bring the forklift over here and lift this up so it's easy for me to access it and, uh, and start putting it together. If you don't have access to a forklift, you might have a problem getting it in the back of your truck once you put all the equipment on it. But in the meantime, if you wanna build it out, kind of like what we've done here, is just put a bunch of pallets in place, build out your equipment, and then get a forklift, lift it up, and put it in the back of your truck. So let's take a quick break. I'm gonna get a forklift in there and I'm gonna show you how to assemble. Okay, so we got it up on the forklift. I got the first upright sitting here so I can show you how it's going to assemble. Actually, let me do it from that end. A little easier for the camera to capture all the shot this way. So, a couple things I wanna point out. 
Uprights are all the same. They're gonna have these three holes in them and you wanna set it so that this at the top is facing the same <laughs> direction on each side. So the cross members go from side to side. If you want the bolts running this way to go into it, that's fine. Or if you want them that way to go into it, that's fine as well. Whatever you choose. But we're going to take the main, this is the flat. I'm gonna make sure, cause I'm gonna put it on the parts list. We'll make sure I call everything exactly the same. This is what I've called the flat upright mount. Okay. <clears throat> and then the other one is the, uh, the opposing upright mount, which has a bend to it. See, it turns, so that goes on the other side. And let me grab this here. So, some things to keep in mind as, you, as this get assembles is that you wanna start putting bolts and stuff in and get them kind of somewhat positioned in place, but don't tighten everything down right at the beginning because it will be a headache because things won't line up exactly sometimes, just like anything else you put together. You don't want to, I'm gonna lay this down so it doesn't fall on my head while I'm trying to put it together. Oh, so we have a one inch, three eighths bolt and wash. And by the way, these are stainless steel. All the bolts and washers are stainless steel so that you don't have to worry about bleach and that kind of thing deteriorating the product. Put your washer on, slide it through the hole. And then the nuts have the, the self locking or I don't know the correct terminology for that, but you can see that they will they hold themselves in place. So you don't need a washer on the backside. Put it up in there. And I am going to just get it started. I'm not gonna tighten it all the way down just cause I want it to hold in place. And so I'm gonna leave that there. Then I'm gonna take the next one Put it on and do the exact same thing. Now, I'm gonna do the next side. Same thing with it. Put the bolt, washer, nut, stick it on here. Just loosely, and guess what? Look at the way that's going. That's the wrong one. I had it set up for the other end and I moved it. <clears throat> so I want to get the right one here. So let me grab the one that's sitting right here. Now you see, so let's brighten it because this is important to note. You don't want to put these on the wrong way. Remember this goes on the long end where the channels are. Both sides, that's the flat one. And then we have the opposing base plate support. What I call it again, I gotta make sure I use the right words. Opposing upright support, there we go. These are upright supports. Put it down, put, uh, I took my washer off. Let me put that back on. Slide that in there. Put a nut on the back. Now, I just left these finger tight so they have mobility in them. And I take my upright support, slide it down on here, and then grab. Those were one inch, three eighths bolts. Now I have a two and three quarter inch bolt. I'm gonna slide it through the upright, take it all the way through to the other side. I can see it there. There we go. And leave that loose and then just put in the other two bolts. I 
And there you have it. Now, I'm still gonna leave this finger tight because in a minute, we're gonna put the ladder rack up there and I wanna make sure it slides in because sometimes you tighten it, it's just, you know, it could be off like a half inch or a quarter inch one direction or the other. And until I get that in there, I don't wanna tighten it down here. Before we start putting these all together, I wanna show you something that's real important to note that if you put this on a trailer, other than like in the back of a truck, it doesn't have much room to go anywhere, so it's fine. But if you put it on a trailer or if you put it on the back of the truck, say uh, a bigger truck or a flatbed or something like that, and you want it to be secure so it doesn't go anywhere, one thing I want to point out is that in all four corners, we left a hole so that you could run it down through the bed of the truck and bolt this down to the bed of the truck and it's not going to slide around anywhere. So you'll be in good shape. You don't have to. And obviously you can do other things. You can do ties and stuff like that or ratchet straps, things like that. But if you want to really secure it, there's a bolt hole right there. And it's in all four corners on this skid to be able to do that. Um, put a lot of thought in this so that it would work for in a lot of different situations. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and put everything together. All right, so now we've got all four of the uprights in place. We have finger tightened the bolts. They're not super tight. So um, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna lower it down, and I'm going to insert the ladder rack above. Set it right there. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna take the ladder rack, and now you'll see what I'm talking about, how it goes together. Slides right in here, and notice like, Get the camera there so you can see. So that one went in real easy. It just slides right in there, but I have, Miguel, can I come over here on this side? I wanna show something real quick. Come around behind me a little bit. Okay, see how I got it? See how that's off? But because I left it finger tight, now I can adjust everything, put it in place, and it goes just fine. So. If I would have tightened those up <laughs> below and had them all snug, there wouldn't have been any play here and I couldn't have done that. So now if I want to adjust, I can just kind of move this up, mark the holes for the height that I want. You know, it'll go all the way up to about right there. But if not, you just let it sit there. And then, and then you get a lot of support out of this ladder, this top piece for when we mount stuff on the side too, this supports up this frame. So you have to have this ladder rack before you can even put the shelving on. Let me put the other top piece for the ladder rack in place. There we go. Just like that. Now, then let's talk about the side supports. So the side supports will go, they can go just above the wheel well and right against the frame here and they will go flush on each side, measured out how you want it. They could, now if you don't use a equipment rack, or equipment shelf on the side, you literally could like put this up, match it up to the, uh, the side of the bed and put some st stuff across here if you want for your own purpose. Of course, it's up to you. What you wanna be make sure of is that if, if, if you're doing it, you probably wanna come in just above these braces and mount it on so you have this bottom support here to keep it in place that should still put you right above the wheel well um, but double check because when you put the equipment rack on, you need to make sure you got space here. It'll probably sit right in here with, uh, once it's bolted in place. So that's where that goes. And then the cross members come across. Now, one thing I want to point out when you're drilling your holes, you want to make, you want to make as certain as possible that you square up and draw 
and go. You don't want to come at angles. It's easy to do that. You can come at angles. You can go up, down, or whatnot. Go in as straight as possible with it. Now, obviously, you put one bolt through. It can match up to that angle. But if you take things off and you don't mark which piece went where and you put it back on later and you don't have the right angle, it can be a headache because that it's not perfectly square with the frame. So that's just the point of reference. I'm not going to mount these. I just want to show you where they go. And then keep in mind that actually I'm going to set them on the inside. So you can kind of visualize if it was out here on the sides and you can see that on the website. It'll be like that. And then we have the cross members that would go in place and they would sit right on top of that structure. So, and I'm a, I'll, I'll say this again once I get in the back of the truck, we're getting the truck ready to set this in. So I can put a water tank up here, slide this right against that water tank. Now you're starting to see a little more of it with the every, as it gets assembled, it's making more sense. And then I could put surfactant tanks, soap tanks, detergent tanks, I could put uh, soft wash equipment, power wash equipment. I could even take these, mount them on top of those supports, put a plate on here or line it up so I could take the base of my soft wash or power washing skid so it goes through these cross members and mount it right in the middle of the truck or toward the back of the truck, whatever I want to do. Um, like again, it's just, so many cool options you can do with this thing and the way we created it. So now that we've done that, I'm still, I, um, I'm gonna take this. I'm actually not gonna tighten these up, but I'm gonna leave them loose because we're gonna take this apart because it's sold. And then I'm gonna stick it in the back of the truck and I'm gonna show you how we go about mounting the equipment shelf here on the side. I'm gonna walk you through that process. So that'll be the next step. So let's go put it in the back of the truck. So now we got it in the back of the truck. So let me go over a couple things real quick. So I'm gonna make sure it's all the way up against the cab. So Different styles and models of trucks, the way the wheel well set can be slightly different. So this is actually 48 inches wide. It's just like a, a, a sheet of plywood, which would go in the back of any truck. But we have actually a little bit of play in this, in this particular model because the wheel well set a little further off, which is fine. But for this to be universal, it can't be bigger than 48 inches, which we take up the full footprint of 48 inches because the intent is to give us and you the opportunity to put as much equipment as possible on that. Um, that's why these uprights actually sit on top of the base plate and not to the side because we would lose four inches of space off of that base plate and I don't wanna do that. So that, that's actually our unique design. I came up with it, moi. <laughs> uh, again, the gladiator, no. I said it wrong, <laughs> the Illuminator, the Illuminator. <laughs> okay, look right here. So not all short beds are exact same length. So like this one here, we got about two inches. So this is probably, instead of being 65, um, it's two to three inches. So it's like 67 or 68 inches long. Um, but so we have more universal use out of this frame. It can be used in a lot more applications than just here. So let's move on to the, the truck shelf or the uh, equipment shelf. Now, these are the two rubber pieces that would sit in here. And I am just going to take the bolt out because I'm not actually going to mount it on here, but you can measure this out for yourself. You would go. And before I do that, to kind of give you an idea of what we're going to do. So let me take this and I'm going to set it over here. Let me set it on the back of the tailgate to make it easy to see. So 
what I would do is I'd probably go ahead and center everything up real good. So I'd pull this over a little bit. And that's a lot closer to center there. But I would actually take the time, measure it from each side. So like right now it's uh, seven and three eighths. I'm gonna go over here and take a look. See where this sits. And it's right at seven inches. So I probably wanna kick it over that way. Um, three eighths, you know, maybe an eighth or two. It actually was, yeah, about, it was about seven and a half actually. So maybe a quarter inch back this way, if I want to get it perfectly centered. Now, once I've done that, so I want to see what the distance is from here to like, say the center of this, which we're going to go, it would be eight and a half inches, maybe more closer to nine inches. I would take that, I would take that measurement, put it right here on my mount. So I would see it would be nine inches. So I would drill it out right here and then I would mount my rubber foot right there, just like that. But because I'm not gonna do it because this is not going to go in this truck, I wanna show you how I'm gonna set it up. So I'm gonna go through the process of taking this apart real quick, take this bolt out so I don't scratch up the bed or the, the side of the truck with the bolt. Put that there, set this here. And then set this in place just like that. And so what you want to look at is right here. Now, I didn't do this, but before you do this, all these bolts need to be tight. Tight all the way around before you put them back in the truck. Tighten everything up real good. And then <laughs> take your C-clamp. And because this weight is gonna push down, I wanna pull it up against here at the bottom, just like that. Tighten, tighten the C-clamp in place so it holds good and it's already resting on this, which is great. <coughs> this'll, this'll ride right here and it, um, so it'll work really good there and then Get up in the back of the truck and do the same thing on the other end. Just like that. And now I'm able to drill out these holes, put my bolts in place, and my shelf is ready for mounting equipment on. Once you get the bolts put in place. Okay, so I talked about the side supports or the side, side braces earlier. So now you can see, you bring in the, uh, the video. Actually, you might wanna, so you can see right here, so I have this space right in here that I can mount it. So I could go, and I'm, so like I said earlier about being above the wheel well, so these braces themselves are just above the wheel well. I go all the way down, mount it up, and I've got this space right here to mount it in. And if you wanna grab from, shoot it from that side, Miguel, I'll show it here. So now you get an idea of how it goes in there. And it can go up right up to the bottom, just like that. If you, want to, if you want to put it up as high as it'll go, it could go up to here. And let me see. I'm going to grab a couple more C-clamps because I, I just want to visualize this for you.
Okay, so now the two side supports, I've just taken those and clamped them in place. So you kind of see how they would sit there to hold equipment inside the, uh, the exterior of the base plate. Now I could take these cross members, set them in wherever I want them to be positioned up and down across here anywhere. So if I want tanks up here, put a cross member in to hold those tanks up against the front. Can do that. Again, put other tanks behind here or equipment or 55 gallon drums, barrels, however I want to do it. And then I could follow in right behind it with the other cross member to hold it there and then put more equipment back here. So however I want to do that, put it, or if you really want to get slick, you could use the two cross members and put a plate on top of it and mount equipment on top of it as well and then have stuff that goes underneath it like a gas tank or um, uh, uh, just equipment that you're going to store that would slide in underneath. There's, there's just so many options you can do with it here. So I, again, it's really cool. Um, very adjustable and modular type setup that you can construct and, and make it work for however you want for your equipment. So this is the new Illuminata. <laughs> How this came about is I started building this and, and the first one we just did all welding, took it, took it apart, wasn't that happy with it then went to, and started figuring out how can I make this to be assembled by hand and make it modular to create it. So not only can we build it, but other people can use it too in their, in their process and we can ship it. That's a cool thing about it. It makes it very shippable. So ended up, this is like the third generation and I think it is spectacular. It's great. I love it. That's why I call it the Illuminata. And, uh, and it's, it's heavy duty strong, it's gonna last a long time. And um, so that's it, call us at powerwash.com, we get you set up, take care of you. Again, you can put it together yourself, put your own equipment on it, or you can have us do it and use our expertise about how to assemble everything, make sure water flow's right, adjustments are right, um, things are sitting where they should sit on the trailer or on the skid. But if you got that know-how, by all means, you do it. You can DIY it if you want. If you like this, man, give us a thumbs up because I actually really like it. I love this thing. And subscribe to our channel. Hit that bell so you get the notifications in the future. And that's it. That's Illuminator from PowerWatch.com. Thanks for tuning in.